What is cracking and lacking, my DP peeps? It's Josh here with the Pride Productions. It's good to be back. I've been gone for about a week, and today we got an 11th blueprinting tutorial in the UE4. We'll talk about something a little interesting. So it'll be real quick, but I want to talk about event binding. But again, guys, it's good to be back. Had to do a little bit of construction, reconstruction on the channel. Still working on that, but we'll talk about that later. But the point is, I want to talk about event binding. Now, I want to explain that to you before we go any further, okay? I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the content here. i got all kind of all kind of folders. Okay, if I go to content, I haven't even created the DP folder. We're going to create it together. New folder, the DP, because I'm always inside of it. Now, the thing is, we, we, when we talk about event dispatchers, which is something we talked about in the previous blueprinting tutorial, is making things communicate between each other. Like with the with the level blueprint that we have up here and, and with the blueprint we have in here. And there's, a, there's a few different things. So if I press G to open up game mode, we have all our, you can see all our different things here, right? This is where I actually start the game, right here. So if I F11 and all P, there's my guy, okay? Now when it comes to event binding, we're going to talk about today, we actually, I'm going to be talking about the character that you're using in the game, and I'll explain that in a second. So let's talk about a few things first. There's a couple different things you can do. If you go into the blueprint right now, the, the blueprint, go to the level blueprint. We're inside of whatever level we are here. Now what's cool about the level blueprint, we discussed this, is I can grab any object. I can grab that one right here, give it a little box. I got a little grassy box, I got a little mossy box, I got a little metal box, and I can grab it, and I can right click here and add a reference to it. Boom, you know what I'm talking about, sun, okay? And I got that box. You know, so if that box, I need to do something to the box, like I need to, I mean, literally anything. You could, you know, set visibility, and it's going to grab the static mesh component from the actor, and then you could, you need to set the visibility or whatever you want. You know what I'm talking about? So we heat. But the point is, it gets a little more complicated than that. Let's say we had a tiny blueprint. Let's create a real quick, fast blueprint, okay? Just just, just so I can explain to you what's going on here. An actor, I'm going to name it Sphere, okay? Just, just a, a, a Sphere BP. And we will go to Add Component, a static mesh, okay? I don't care what it's called, because literally we we're just going through it, and I'm going to type in sphere here and find like a little ball, like the shape, the the, the shape sphere. You know what I'm talking about the little ball. Oh gosh, my stuff's all messed up, guys. I don't even know why. Let's fix that. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. You can just drag the windows around if you ever find yourself in a predicament like that. You can just drag the stuff around. It's freaking sweet. Or you can make a mess like me. But the point is, in the viewport, we got a ball. Okay, and I'll literally just make. I'll go down here to the collision of our ball while it's selected, okay? And I'll go down to the collision. It says, uh, you got default collisions here. And there's one that's actually like overlap only pawn. You know what I'm talking about? That's the one I'm going to pick, okay? And I'm going to go to the event graph real quick. I'm going to get rid of all this nonsense. And again, this is just so I can show you something completely different. But I want to make sure you understand. I'm going to go to the static mesh, right click, add event, on begin overlap. And if it is now... In the in the in the third person character, we need to we need to see if it is the third person character. So cast two third person character, and you'll see that guy right about there. Okay, and if it is, we'll just print a string, and we're just making sure that everything's working. So if we do overlap, we go, oh, we go, oh hey. Okay. Anyway, the point is it's, that that's that's what we're gonna do. So now if I drag this ball into the world. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I, F11 and Alt P, I got a little, we got to find the ball. Where's the ball? Where'd I put it? Oh, I found it. Now, if I run over top of it, snap, you see, oh, hey, over in the left-hand corner. Now, it gets a little more interesting than that. We talk about dif event dispatchers. So what goes on is, this thing is in our world now, right? Which means I could open up this level blueprint we have here. This is our second window. And I could right-click and grab in the sphere. And it's got everything, all of its components right there. So, hold on, hold on. Let's go back into the sphere. Let's go back into the sphere. And let's add an event dispatcher. And we'll call it, yes, okay? Yes, that's it. Now, instead of doing that, I'm going to call this event right here. If the if the player overlaps the sphere, call yes. You're like, well, what's yes? We'll see if the ball is selected, right? I can type in yes. And you'll see add yes from the sphere. And boom, you have an event. And we can do the exact same thing. So I can print string again. I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you what you can do and be like, and we're going we're gonna to type in, uh, oh, no. You know, I don't know, guys, okay? The point is, F11, all P, let's run over top of this ball. Okay, now it's going to use the event dispatcher to send code to the level blueprint and then back to me. Oh, ho, ho. oh no. Just keep running through it. You know what I'm saying? So here's where it gets interesting, okay? So what we've done is we've created an event dispatcher that we can use outside of the game or outside of the blueprint, and we can send it into the level blueprint. But here's the problem. 
the reason we can do that is because I can select the mesh itself. So what if you have, let's go check this out. Go to content, go to uh, third person, go to meshes. Oh, no, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back. Third person BP, blueprint. I'm opening up the third person blueprint now. Or your character, whatever character you have, okay? Oh, God. Oh, God. Why? Why? Why does this, why is this happening? Guys, I don't know, updated UE4, and now it's making me do stuff. But the point is, let's say I'm inside your character, for instance, the third person blueprint for now, and I, I, I create an event dispatcher called player. Okay. So I have an, oh God, there's a, I, I spelled that all kind of wrong. The point is, player. Okay. And we don't need to open it like that. We don't need to, like, you know, you can see how it opened it up like a, like a, like a function there. We do not need to do that. The point is, the point is, I have an event dispatcher here, and I can call it. So let's say if the F key is pressed, okay, we'll just say if the F key, and it's cool, you can just type in F space and then key, and usually you'll find it, boom. If F key is pressed, I want to call that, okay? Cool. So we got an, an event dispatcher that every time I press the F key, we'll go into the level blueprint, right? We'll go into the level blueprint and call it out. Wait a minute. That's where it's going to get complicated. There is no player in the game. Now, I got the player star here, okay? And I could drag the, let's say I drag the character into the game. You could do that. But what if you're doing level streaming? What if there, it goes to another level, and then it goes to another level, and then it goes to another level, but your character's always back here. You can't keep calling an event dispatcher with the character if the character isn't in the world. This is where we're going to talk about event binding. So check this out. So what's going on? Let's open this back up. Let's go back. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and close our, our our sphere BP because that was just for no reason whatsoever. And let's get rid of this nonsense right here that we created, whatever that is. Okay. We don't we don't need it. We don't have anything in there. So here we go. We got our we got our character and we have an F. That if we press the letter F, it's going to call the player. So I have an event dispatcher called player. If I go into the level blue blueprint here, right? If I go into level blueprint right here, I do not have any way of, of actually selecting the player to actually bring in that blueprint. So we're going to have to do it a little differently. So I'm going to type in event begin play. Okay. And like I said, this is a way that you can kind of uh, up, up event begin play. This is a way that you can kind of get it to where you can bind an event dispatcher to a blueprint, to a blueprint in your level blueprint. I know this is a little strange. You're probably like, I don't understand. We need to get player character, okay? And then what we're going to do that is we're going to cast to whatever character we're using. And again, we're using the third person character, C-S-T-T-H-T, -T -T. third person character. Yes, I found it, guys. Don't be afraid. Now, the thing is, this is where things get interesting. So what's going on is I can drag a line off here and I can type in the word bind. And that's what we've been talking about is binding. And you'll see that there is actually a bind this. You know what I'm saying? Did I spell it right yet? At bind event player. There it is. So here it is. There's the, the name of the event player. Bind event to player. And you get this little bind button. Now you're probably like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that is. Well, check it out. If you've noticed on most of these, you'll see this little bad baby up here. That's where the bind comes in. It's actually very important. So what we'll do is I'm going to type in custom event. Okay. We're going to create a custom event and we're going to name it print. Okay, so I have a custom event up here that every time it is fired, I'm going to print string. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. I probably shouldn't name that print because now it's going to get all confused. I need to make sure I do print string and I'm going to type in wait. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm putting in wait, guys. I'm just putting in wait. So now every time this custom event is called, which has no reason to be called whatsoever, it's going gonna, it's gonna to call number wait. Well, what I'm going to do is I've got the event play. I'm casting to the third person character. I'm bonding the, 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 the event dispatcher we created in the third person character where if I press F, it calls this event. And I will take this and plug it into this custom event. And boom, we have binded the event dispatcher inside of the third person character to a custom event inside the level blueprint. And believe me, guys, this is a freaking very, very, very important thing that you need to know when it comes to binding blueprints because you, I mean, I believe me, it's easy to get lost sometimes when you're communicating between levels and players and enemies and actors and all this stuff. So now let's see if it works. You know what I'm talking about? F11, Alt P. Now, every time I press F, you see wait. You see wait pop up there, bro. That's my event dispatcher guy. I got all kinds of event dispatchers as fast as I can, fast as I can, 
as fast as I can push them. Not any more faster because the computer's faster than me. But the point is, every time I press F, let's just let's just let's look at all this, guys. Let's see what's going on. Every time I press the letter F in here, all it does is call this event dispatcher I made. But that event dispatcher, you can't just pull it in here like you have it over an object. You know, if you select, like I said, you select the sphere. Remember the sphere we had in here? I just literally selected it, and at, while I have it selected, I can literally just type in what did we name it? What did we name it? Yes. You know what I mean? We name it. Yes. Boom. There it is. There's the event. You cannot do that with your character if you're using level streaming or he's going to be, he's not in the world. Kind of like all I have here is a player start. You know, if I press G and look at everything, all I have is a player start for where the character starts and it's right back here. Again, you can't click on that and go in here and, and figure out what the character wants. No, you have to cast to the third person character, bind an event to this dis dispatcher we created, and then set that up here, and then boom, now you have it. And again, one more again, son. One more again. Press an F. Wait. Just keep on waiting. You can't be afraid to wait. I've been waiting my whole life, okay? I've been still waiting. I keep waiting. Now, guys, that's it, okay? Event binding, blueprinting, tutorial number 11, UE4, Deprived Productions, Josh here. Loving you, missing you. Glad to be back. Sorry for the week off. Had to get some reconstruction done, but I love y'all, man. And believe me, this is very important. This is very, very important, so I wanted to show it off. It's a little trickier than your eh. You know, you're a little easier than some of your blueprinting skills, but knowing that you can do that, that way you can, con con you know, communicate with your player in the level blueprint. Sometimes you can just cast to the character and pull a, pull a variable out and use it or whatever, but sometimes you may need to actually call an event. You may need to call an event inside the player and then cast, make that event happen inside the level. And there's how you do it. Binding, my friend. Bind them. Don't be afraid to bind them. Bind them a little bit. Okay. I bind all day. Okay, love you, miss you. Josh here again. Please go subscribe to the YouTube channel to Pride Productions, man. Hit us up. We're having a blast. Get in there and have some fun with us. Ask me if you have any questions. I got a couple tutorials that you guys have requested. I'm finally working on now. I'm going to be releasing them soon. All kind of cool stuff. Music, big update coming out tomorrow for all kinds of cool, sweet stuff. Love you guys, man. Miss you guys. Sorry for the week off. Had to get some rec rec reconstruction of the YouTube channel done, and we're still working on it. You'll see now that we have some, some thumbnail action, making things look a little prettier. Um, and a few other things that we're doing. Uh, a few other really, really, really cool things for you guys. So anyway, thanks for watching. I love you. I miss you. I want to be on you. Until next time, peace.